Hello there programmers and welcome to another episode in our Flask tutorial series. Okay, today's lesson we're going to do something uh, a little bit more than we've done before. We're going to start building towards a production ready Flask application. Now we're not going to be building any particular app. This is just going to be teaching you all the actual tools that you can use to make your uh, Flask app ready to run in a production environment. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to build off the concepts of the previous lesson, which is about blueprints. So um, if you don't know how to do that, it might be useful to go back and, and watch that previous lesson. Otherwise, uh, follow along and you'll start to get some of the understandings on how we actually use blueprints in this lesson as well, if you haven't already done that. Okay. So let's go ahead and start. I've got a virtual environment set up with Flask inside of my PyCharm. I'm going to pip install Flask in here. Uh, this is going to be pretty quick since I already have Flask installed locally. You'll be able to see all of this get set up. Okay. Um, now, what we're going to do is I'm going to do things a little differently. If you followed along in my previous tutorial series, I typically do a uh, main function, uh, a main part of the module that you launch into. You check to make sure it's main, and then you start your app. Um, I'm not going to do that today. Today, I'm going to be using uh, what's called a factory method for uh, creating our actual application. What this is going to allow us to do is uh, use another type of web server uh, that is um, more production ready than the one that comes built in with Flask. Um, we'll cover how to actually set that up in a later lesson, but this is the first step towards getting there. Okay, So let's go ahead and set up a new uh, Python package. Um, or a directory, okay? And um, what we're going to call this directory is the same thing that we call the top level. Um, so this is going to be a nested directory, and inside of here, uh, we're going to create a new Python file. And this is going to be our init.py, okay? Now, what this does is this makes this the Flask Factory module inside of the Flask Factory project, okay? There is a key distinction here. Um, this will allow us to do top-level setup files and um, actually build our package for deployment. And then inside of here is where we're going to build all of our app code. Okay. So we're going to bring in um, OS. This is a little different if you've been following along in the tutorial series. Um, and then we're going to do from Flask import Flask. Okay. So once we bring in um, Flask itself, uh, now we need to create our uh, our function that's going to set up our app okay um, this is called a factory function because it's a factory for generating new versions of the application okay so we're going to do create app um, and uh, one of the things we can do here is we can pass in um, if you read the official documentation for um, for Flask, it'll recommend that you do this. What this will allow us to do is to pass in a test configuration when we create this app. Uh, it's something I do. I don't use this a whole ton, but uh, this is uh, something that's pretty useful if you want to do a lot of local development and test out configurations before you actually get in here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set up our actual app, um, and this is where things start to deviate quite a bit from the previous tutorials in this. Okay. We set up the Flask app inside of this function, okay, and then we're going to return the app at the end, okay. Uh, I'm also going to do something a little different here. I'm going to do uh, instance relative config, and I'm going to turn this on. Um, what this will allow us to do is um, this app that gets spun up will be um, one single instance, and everything in there will be relative to that instance of the application running. Uh, and then another thing that's super useful to do at this point is we can set up, we can pass in right here where we create the application, we can pass in our uh, some configuration, okay? So let's just pass in one just so that we see how it's done. Uh, we're going to pass in the secret key. Um, this is super useful um, if you want to uh, run your development. This secret key is used by Flask to generate and sign all of your hash keys and things uh, that you're going to be using uh, if you use passwords and things. Um, we don't need to worry about that. Uh, all you need to know is that right now we're just using a static string of development. When you actually bring in uh, 
your application into a production environment, you're going to pass this in uh, to the configuration through your uh, config.py at the root level. Okay. Uh, now, what we do is we check to see if that test config has been set. Uh, and here, if it has been set, we're going to say the config is from PyFile and um, config.py. Uh, otherwise, uh, and we use silent equals true here. We don't want to know if, if this file isn't found. Uh, so this is the config file that I was talking. You're going to put this at the top level here. So um, above the current uh, module directory, you do config.py. And this is where you're going to actually configure all of your environment settings. OK. Um, if this file, if test config does exist, uh, we want to load it instead. OK. From mapping, exactly what we did up above the from mapping. The difference is we're going to pass in the test config instead. Okay, um, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, the other thing we want to do in here um, is just uh, set up, make sure that uh, all of our directories are set up properly. So um, what we do is we make sure any underlying directories are uh, for storing all of our instance configuration is set up. Okay. So this is uh, this is how we actually create the instance directory when we run this for the first time. Okay. Um, and then if this doesn't work, uh, so if we get an operating system level error, we're just going to move on with life and pretend like nothing happened. Okay, um, what else can we do here? Uh, right, well, let's set up our first route just to see, make sure that everything is working. This is our sanity check. Um, so we're going to create a hello and return hello world. And that's all we have to do there. Um, and then return our app. Okay. And in the file. That's it. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. All right, uh, this is almost exactly like the Flask apps that we've done before. The only difference is uh, we're wrapping it inside a create app, and then we're setting up we're setting up a few of our configuration settings here that we haven't done in previous tutorials. All right, um, so now we can run this. But unlike with the main that we've been using before, um, we're not going to set up a main function in here. What we're going to do instead is from the command line here, uh, I am going to uh, set uh, an app or a Flask app. So I'm going to export the variable Flask app, Flask app and I'm going to set it equal to uh, Flask factory. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, I'm going to hit enter. Okay, that's how we set that. And then I can export a Flask in, uh, oops, all capital here, it helps, Flask ENV, and I'm going to equal that to um, development, I believe is what it's called. Okay, so what this is going to do is these are the two environment variables that are required to do a Flask run uh, with this setup here. We're going to tell it where is the actual application located. It's located in Flask factory, and the environment is in development. Now, if we had defined this at the root level here, <coughs> like we have in our previous packages, and we just ran this next command, uh, we wouldn't have actually had to do Flask app and define it. So what we can do now is we can now use the Flask um, CLI that comes installed with Flask, and we can just run this. At this point, we set up our application. It's running. We can come over here into our window, hit refresh, and see that we get hello world back. Okay. So this is how you set up a basic um, factory function. But why in the world would you want to do it this way? This is way more complicated than uh, previous ways that we've used. So here's where things can get a little interesting. Okay. Now what we're going to do is inside of Flask, the Flask Factory module, I'm going to set up and use a blueprint. So let's go ahead and create a new file here. We're going to call this user.py. This is going to be our new uh, user user module, okay? <coughs> and I'm going to say from Flask import um, blueprint, 
and then I'm going to say BP equals blueprint and we're going to call this our user blueprint. We're going to pass in the name of the module that's being loaded and we're going to give this a URL prefix uh, equal to slash user. Okay. And then the only other thing I'm going to do in here is set up BP dot route and I'm going to set the root route and let's define another hello function in here. Okay. Just to prove that this is working, we're going to return uh, hello user. Okay. That way we know that we're in a different place than we were at our, at our root. Okay. So now we've set up a blueprint. What we can do now is inside of here, after we define our app routes, but before we return the app itself, we can now say from dot import user. Okay. So from our root module, import the user module. Okay. And then we can say app dot use. Um, oh man. Uh, my mind just went completely blank here. It's app dot uh, register. Uh, oh yeah, register blueprint. Oh, that was that was embarrassing. Uh, user dot bp. So what we're doing is we're taking, we're registering the blueprint here with user dot bp, and user dot bp is uh, this object right here, this blueprint object with the routes defined on it. Okay. So let's go ahead and stop this down here. Um, I want to show you another thing we can do. So we saw that we can do the exports here uh, on the command line, and then we can do flash run. If you're in PyCharm like, like I am, you can actually do a configuration up here. So if you go up to uh, add configuration and hit plus, <coughs> we can set up a new Python configuration. And the script file, what we're going to do is we're going to hit the little open uh, widget here. And we're going to see all the all, everything in here. We can go into VENV, bin, and select Flask. So this is the executable. That's like that's like us running the Flask command. We hit open. Our parameter is going to be run. That's what we're doing. And then our um, our actual tech, uh, th things we're going to put in here for our arguments are going to be. Um, so if you hit this little open thing here, we can add um, in. A flask, uh, a flask app, oops, underscore app, and then we can set that to be the name of the of the project. So in this case, flask factory, and then we can add another line, and we can set this to flask uh, underscore env, and we can make this env development. Okay, and we hit OK. We hit apply, make sure everything takes, and hit OK. Now what we can do is we can hit this arrow up here, and it'll run it with our debugger and everything that we want here. So we can see this route is set up again. We hit uh, refresh, everything works. We hit slash user, and we get taken to hello user. And now we can see everything is working as we expect it to here inside of PyCharm. So that's it. So that's kind of the the power here of uh, using this uh, th this app factory is now we can start to import everything in here, register it all, and um, when we start using databases in upcoming tutorials, uh, it'll make it pretty easy to just drop in a database into this into the structure and have the database confined to a single instance. Then when we create, we're, we're going to start with SQLite, which writes a file to disk. It will actually be written into this instance folder here that was created. I don't know if you noticed that by this line here. Okay. So that's it. That's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.